morning. Welcome one and all. Isn't it a beautiful day? All right. My name is Emily Tanis Lickle. Uh, I use she, her pronouns. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you have a place here at Alki United Church of Christ. We acknowledge that we are on the unceded traditional land of the Coast Salish people, including the Duwamish and Suquamish people past and present. We honor with gratitude the land itself and the Duwamish and Suquamish tribes. Whether you are physically here in this room or zooming in from home or watching this recording sometime in the future, you matter. You are loved. May God's peace surround you during this time and always. Good morning. I'm Vicki. Nice to see you here this morning. I invite you to stand, if you are able, for the call to worship. Let us open our hearts to the sunshine of God's love. Let us open our souls to the gentle wind of God's spirit. We have gathered to hear the good news of Jesus Christ, a word that renews us again and again. Glory be to God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Let us worship God together. The first scripture reading this morning is Psalm 138, paraphrased by Nan C. Merrill in Psalms for Praying and Invitation to Wholeness. I give you thanks, O blessed one, with my whole heart. Before all the people, I sing your praise. I was humbled when I came to see that you dwell in me in the sacred chapel of all souls. My gratitude knows no bounds, for you are the Holy One, the life of our life. On the day that I called, you answered me. The strength of my soul you increased. All the leaders of the earth shall one day praise you when your spirit awakens in every heart and they shall proclaim the new dawn of light and love. Great will be the radiation of your glory, for even as you are the most high, you are friend to the lowly. The arrogant close their hearts to your love and guidance. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You are a very presence as I face my fears and doubts. Your strength upholds me. You guide me as I pray to fulfill my purpose on earth. You do not forsake those who call upon you. Your steadfast love and truth endure forever. In the Gospel, Luke 11, 1 through 13, from the Revised Standard Version. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. 
For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Salt, fat, acid, heat. In her book and Netflix series, Samin Nosrat teaches how to use these four elements to make anything taste amazing. Anybody seen these shows? My spouse, Julia, has. Okay. <laughs> well, Samin teaches instinctual cooking based on using the elements with knowledge and common sense. Salt enhances flavor more than any other ingredient. Water prepared for blanching green beans is made salty as the sea. Flake salt says yes to a dish. Fat carries the flavor. Butter and oils coat the tongue, intensifying the experience of eating. And acid, whether a spritz of lemon or some vinegar, it triggers chemical reactions that change the color and texture of food. It balances the flavor. And then heat, well, that's the element of transformation. It is such fun to watch Samin cook. Her passion and fascination with food makes me want to cook. She has spent so much time with those elements, so much time cooking, it's second nature to her. Like Samin teaching through engaging salt, fat, acid, and heat, Jesus taught his friends how to pray using essential elements. The disciples noticed that Jesus was always going off by himself to pray. They were curious about his prayer life. And they knew that John the Baptist taught a certain prayer to his disciples. What prayer is Jesus praying, they wondered. They wanted to emulate him. Jesus prayed instinctually. He had spent so much time praying, was so familiar with talking to God, so knowledgeable about what he was doing, that it was second nature. They wanted to pray like that and said, teach us to pray. Luke doesn't share this teaching of Jesus out of the blue. It's actually the third in a trilogy. The first teaching is about a certain lawyer who asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus told the story of the good Samaritan who stopped and cared for the one who had been robbed and left to die. And the second is the story of what happened in a certain village when Martha and Mary received Jesus in their home and Mary knelt at the feet of Jesus. Today, we read the story in Luke that begins with Jesus praying in a certain place. A certain lawyer, a certain village, and a certain place. The first story teaches us to love everyone the second is about our relationship with God, and this third story teaches us how to pray. The Lord's Prayer in Luke is shorter than the more well-known full version in Matthew. It is simple and direct. It includes all the essential components of prayer. It first orients us toward God, then asks for the meeting of needs for ourselves and the world, and it ends with asking that we be kept from all evil. These elements don't need to be in this order or even all in the same prayer. Yet this pattern of prayer contains the necessary components for healthy conversations with God. As salt, fat, acid, and heat are to cooking, these are the elements of prayer. 
and it is a good recipe. This prayer would have seemed odd to the disciples from the start. They were used to using royal titles for God. This was something very different. Personal, familial, and loving. God as father, mother, parent. It suggests intimacy. A child climbs into the lap of a parent. The Jesus prayer teaches us to address God both personally, relationally, as a parent, and also acknowledges the holiness of God. Father, hallowed be your name. God is our parent and holy other, mysterious, divine. God is both. Prayer that acknowledges both our relationship with God and the holiness of God is praying like Jesus. It has that crucial element of polarity, that God is both known intimately and unknowable all at once. We are taught to pray, to approach God, to approach God as family and mystery in the same breath. The Jesus prayer then teaches us to say, your kingdom come. This is a commitment we align our will with God's will. And God's will is not a mystery. It's pretty clear. Jesus summed it up. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. That is the will of God. And when we look at how Jesus spent his time, we get a pretty good idea of what that meant to him. Healing the sick, feeding those who are hungry, meeting basic needs, being in relationship giving people hope. Your kingdom come. The kingdom Jesus taught about was an upside-down kingdom where the last is first and the first is last. And so I believe kingdom language is really helpful because we are siblings in Christ. We are kin. When we regard one another as family, not only within faith community, but everyone, all the earth and the world, people, plants, animals, ecosystems, we are one kingdom. When we are kin, we are responsible for the well-being of one another, and that has power to change the world. After your kingdom come, the Lord's Prayer turns to petition, asking God. The petition in this good recipe has the elements of give, forgive, and deliver. Jesus first tells us to ask for what we need as a child asks their parent. It is good and expected that we pray for what we need. We are to pray not only for extreme situations and when we're in crisis, but the everyday worries and concerns that trouble us. Jesus prayed for the meeting of daily needs. He was concerned with people getting lunch during a long teaching and wine when it ran out at a wedding. He instructed his disciples to pray for daily bread. They lived in a culture of hospitality. They were used to receiving from one another. God is portrayed as a parent who gives with joy. We are expected to pray for our daily needs. And notice that he doesn't say, give me my daily bread. It is communal. Give us our daily bread. When we pray, give us each day our daily bread, we who are fed are making a commitment to feed those who are hungry. It is a call to generosity. The second part of the petition is forgive. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. In this prayer, we are not expected to sit back and have God do all the forgiving. We also forgive, and it is out of our forgiving of others that we ask God to forgive us. 
And in the third part of this petition, Jesus tells us to ask to be delivered. Do not bring us to the time of trial. As one theologian explains, the only time God tries us is when there is something in our hearts that needs revealing. In this, way, in this we pray that nothing is separating us from enjoying a relationship with God. There is much to unpack in these petitions of give, forgive, and deliver. And this sermon is on the whole prayer, so I'm not unpacking it all here. But this recipe, although it seems very simple on the surface, is actually pretty complex. These petitions are not only about our own needs. They're also about the world's needs. Prayer that includes petition is like cooking with acid and heat. It changes the whole composition. Petitioning God is not telling God what we want, but receiving what we need. Jesus taught the disciples a prayer that has stayed with believers through centuries. It helps us converse and commune with God when we are on a journey while laying on a bed awaiting surgery, upon rising and going to sleep, at table and at worship. He taught us a pattern of prayer that contains all the essentials. Father, hallowed be your name. Give us each your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. Samin introduces her book by saying, anyone can cook anything and make it delicious. The Jesus prayer teaches us that anyone can pray using the elements that Jesus modeled. When teaching cooking, Samin explains that a good recipe can be training wheels. As long as you aren't going to abandon your own common sense and your own sense of agency. The prayer of Jesus is a good recipe. One that we can use and adapt with our own spices and flavors. When we are adept at cooking, we don't necessarily need to rely on recipes alone. We have the knowledge and we may find that we can rely some on our instincts. The Jesus prayer is like that. Once we have the form down, the elements second nature, we may find that we have some freedom in our prayer life and can rely more on our instincts. The prayer of Jesus we're using this month in worship keeps that same prayer pattern that Jesus taught, that same good recipe. And we'll use other adaptations in the weeks to come, all based on this framework that Jesus taught. And like a favorite recipe, we always have the prayer of Jesus in Luke and Matthew to come back to. This prayer, this teaching, is always ready to help us pray. Yet more than a recipe, the prayer of Jesus is a vow, a commitment to God and God's mission in the world. May we continue in prayer, approaching God as our divine parent, aligning our will with God's will, and asking that all may receive what they need. Keep teaching us, Jesus, that we may pray as you pray. <laughs>